Ten seconds remaining. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Game Show Invitational. This is the third and final game of the Losers Bracket Finals. Burn United going up against Scary Faces currently tied 1-1. It's personally hilarious to me that a team that disbanded is you know, having a pretty good shot at the Grand Finals of this tournament, but we'll see. It is still one game away, potentially one game away. I'm Mike Loris, going to be one of your casters for today. MRP is here as well, and it seems like Zai really helped out their team, at least... Uh, at least help put the players into the positions that they're most comfortable with. Yeah, they definitely just seem to execute a lot better. They were positioned a lot better. Uh, as you mentioned, a lot of Shadowways uh, static storms were very underwhelming, being that they were kind of reactively thrown, thrown on the back foot, and they only really ever caught one here. I don't think we saw multiple hero static storm all game long. And uh, SFC just looking discombobulated in that game too. So definitely uh, Zai playing well on the darks here, but altogether BU looking pretty solid. They're going to open up banning out that Tusk from SFZ, taking away one of their comfort heroes. And looking to close this out, uh, the winner goes on to the grand finals, as you mentioned. And winner gets like 900 extra euro from wherever they're saying yeah, right 1, now. Yeah, 1,000 actually. Yeah, yeah 2,200 to 3,100 and then 6,200 for... Mm. Uh, first place in the tournament in general. Lishrak was banned out in the first two games, and now he's available. So we'll see if BU want to grab that one right now, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't see a reason why not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can definitely do that. Uh, if not, they can go for something a little bit more in Mind Control's wheelhouse. He's had to play a little bit out of his comfort zone thus far in these first two games, the Sven and then the Dragon Knight. But they're going to go back to their game one. Uh, with the Wyvern here and uh, pick that up against SFZ. It's just been proven to be such a good support over and over again. So much defensive capability, a lot of offensive with the curse as well. This is the first time though State 21's been able to get his hands on his Leshrock. It's been banned in the first two games, so we'll see how they do with that. Right, so as far as dealing with Leshrac, there aren't many heroes that have an outright win versus him in lane, like yeah. play OD. Like that's what you pick if you really want to shut down Leshrac, but even then you have to deal with quite a bit of lightning. Uh, you generally have to apply pressure to him through multiple heroes, and Winter Wyvern isn't a great hero at doing that. So mm -hmm. if you want to have Ten Mind seconds. Control or whoever's going towards the mid lane have any sort of decent shot, they're going to need a support that Five is going to be rotating minutes. very heavily, such as the Earthshaker, plus someone who could actually Dying lay the damage in. Back. Shadow Fiend might be in consideration here for BU as their third pick. Yeah, it definitely would make sense. Uh, as well, uh, Mind Control is a very good SF. We've seen that time and time again. Uh, he won't have the worst time versus Lashrak early on, especially with the roaming assistance available to him from the ES. I like the opening from SFZ, though. Uh, if you Cold Embrace, you're susceptible to a Soul Catcher Split Earth, uh, and that will pretty much hit every time. So it is like a nice quasi counter to the Wyvern having all that magical burst. Uh, and as well, we've seen the merits of Leshrak. Uh, recently with the changes to uh, the items available to you. So he's looked very good. We'll see if State 21 can play a little bit better in this one than he did on his Lena in the past game. But I want to say pretty much everyone from SFZ underwhelming in game two. Right, and we just only hope as viewers that they're not too shook up by that last game mm -hmm. because I mean, not only did they lose, but they didn't really put up that great of a fight in only a 25-minute yeah. game. So. Yeah, hopefully no one is tilting here because that would be a less than ideal way to end this best of three and to end the losers bracket finals. But we'll see what they have planned for this uh, second ban and pick phase. Ban. Juggernaut actually going to be banned out. That one kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, it's interesting, especially with the defensive capability the disruption up against the Omni Slash. So it's a little interesting. I mean, he's not the most ideal target for like a disrupt into a split earth because he does have that Blade Fury. So maybe that's the thought process behind it. Demonic Purge deals with him fairly well, though. So it's, yeah, it's a little odd to see that come out from SFZ. Uh, he's not definitely one of the seconds. strongest considered carries right now, uh, considering the recent nerf. Five so either way, they're going to take that out of the pool. Uh, I, I assume SFZ will be pretty composed here. This is for uh, at least second place if you win. So it's it's a big game for either side. As you mentioned, a little odd that maybe a stand -in a team full of stand-ins technically makes it through. But the Pub Seeker are going to be banned once again for the second game in a row by Burden United. They're going to take out Shadowways Dazzle. He played great on that in game one uh, with his Graves and not so good on the Disruptor in game two. So good bans coming out from BU. Yeah, especially when you combo a Dazzle up with a Shadow Demon, like it may be unnecessarily high amounts of damage with a Shadow Demon mm -hmm. setting up for a Shrak and a Shadow Wave, 
But you can rest assured that whoever's Ten caught in that is going to be nine. real, real dead. We have another Huskar fan from Scary Faces. I mean, I guess there's a possibility that these two heroes are seen, but yeah. uh, are you really scared of them? That's the question. Shadow Demon, again, very good against that Huskar. You could slow him down. You could mm -hmm. save whoever's going to get jumped by that life break. And then even a Dark Seer is really good up against the Huskar, which yeah. is clearly going to be their plan. So I have no idea what's going on with these bands from Scary Faces, but their picks are looking more or less on point. Yeah, I mean, it makes a little more sense for BU to have the Huskar in this game than it did the other game, the last Shock being a core, but, I mean, Edict is physical damage, there's still ways to deal with him, Edict's not the best through an armlet, but either way, I guess it's just something Scary Face is not really willing to deal with here just yet. They are going to pick up the Dark Seer, so this has been a hero picked up in every single game thus far in this series. Uh, Ramsey's looked solid in it on game one. Uh, Zai looking a little better in game two. Ramsey's probably going to pick this up again. And as you mentioned, Shadow Fiend for mind control going to take towards that mid lane. And he's going to that's putting a hero in his very capable hands. He's super comfortable on this SF. He's going to farm well as well as they stack the as long as they stack the jungle for him too. So it, he's not going to lose as hard as you would expect him to to a Lashrak in the mid lane. Especially if he has any sort of backup at all from the Shaker. If a Fissure, it doesn't even have to block, honestly. As long as you land a Fissure, as long as the enemy is stunned and that Lashrak is stunned, two raises are going to land most of the time. One is guaranteed to land. So it's a lot of burst damage for Lashrak, who really excels in the lane by the fact that he can harass more than he gets harassed. And that's not necessarily the case when you have to worry about a Fissure and you have to worry about raises. So it's a dangerous situation for the mid lane. And I mean, I don't know if they could really afford to put anyone with that Lashrak. Maybe a Shadow Demon so that they mm -hmm. get some combos. Obviously, the uh, disruption to Split Earth is definitely a threat, but with this Keeper of the Light now up from Scary Faces, yeah, I don't know if this Lashrak is actually going to get any backup. Yeah, I, I do like this Keeper pick. It does make the little uh, middle lane a little bit scarier, um, but the Shock of Magic works very nice with the Lashrak as well. He's got this set up from the Disruption Split Earth for an Illuminate, so could be pretty damn dangerous. Uh, it's also going to keep the whole team healed up uh, alongside the mechanism if he's ever able to get up that agonim so that'll accelerate the push along with that edict and maybe you see kind of a split pushy type uh, core coming out from sfz with that recall available to him but speaking of which anti-mage going to be the choice for a burden united presumably for come with me here I was just about to mention that Lancer. Lancer Keeper Light, definitely a combo, but also going to give yeah. them that late game that they really are looking for right now. Naga Siren's still in the pool if they want to you know, switch up the Naga style a little bit, but uh, you know, not really a great combo with Keeper Light. Uh, mm. For BU, it just seems like they're going for very safe tactics and scary faces. Like, whenever you have Keeper Light and Shadow Demon, you have to execute just a little bit you know, more efficiently than the enemies since Illuminate is a very high impact skill, but it's also Ten prone to missing. Remaining. Yeah, uh, scary faces. They can very easily grab one Five final pushing hero, maybe you know, a little more of a mid late game tower damager, such as the DK, and then Dyer lay the tower team. aggro onto BU. Yeah, it's gonna be a timing window for SFC in this one. That's for sure. The late game, I feel like, is handily in the favor of BU here. Let's rock. Nothing to scoff at late game, especially as the BKB start to dwindle down, but just the uh, raw damage output from the SF and the Anti-Mage is definitely going to be able to scale a little bit better than this DK Lashrock Dark Seer core. So offlaner presumably to come out here for BU and look for them to get something a little bit defensive, a little bit tanky to help them carry through the mid game into that late game where they have the advantage. Well, there's no clockwork, there's no dark seer. That's uh, pretty much what we've been seeing throughout these entire mm -hmm. games for those offline positions. Broodmother, though not banned this game, is really not what you want to be picking, I don't think, up against yeah. what scary faces have right now. So that's probably not in consideration. Uh, I don't know. Like, I guess you could always go for someone like an offlane mag and try to accelerate the farm of Antimage, do something like that. Yeah, I don't mind the Centaur either. The Stampede's pretty nice against what Scary Faces have. It's not something we see picked up all that often anymore. Uh, they could even go for something like a Tide. These are kind of throwback, uh, kind of throwback offlaners, but not too many BKB builders on Scary Faces' side. Leshrock has a situational BKB build. Uh, Dragonite, definitely a core item for him, but I feel like anything that they can get which helps them deter the five men from SFZ and allow them cool. to farm a little bit up will be nice. Calling it right now, Elder Titan. Zai played it in some other game where he was standing <laughs> in. It might have actually... Was it for Burning United? No, it was for someone else, but mm -hmm. Elder Titan, right? Like, you get the 
anti push with the spirit thing. You get the scouting. You get the extra damage. Yeah, the stomp is nice too uh, to cover on top of the disruption. So, yeah, it could be it could be a very nice pickup. It's not something we see all that often either. But the natural order, uh, if the late game wasn't already in BU's favor, is really gonna tilt that. Maybe a little bit melee heavy. Ooh, Nyx Assassin. Well, I'm kind of bummed out since El Titan I think would have been sick here. But mm -hmm. Nyx Assassin is also pretty reasonable. When you have targets like Keeper of the Light and Shadow Demon and four Intelligence Heroes, that mana burn is going to scale into the late game like no other. It's a pretty potent threat. Yeah, and we get to see Zai play it, so treat for all of us here uh, on that Nyx Assassin. Game three of your loser's bracket finals here in the Game Show Invitational, guys. Everything on the line in this one. Winner moves on to the grand finals. Loser goes home with a nice chunk of change. All right, so it's going to be on the Radiant side, Scary Faces. Quista is going to be handling the Lifshrak, going up towards the top lane. Looks like they're going to go for an aggro try. I like this mix-up. Eknart is going to be playing the Keeper of the Light. Shadowy is on the Shadow Demon. How appropriate. And we got Space 21, State 21 on the DK, and at least Ramsey's on the solo lane Darks here. This is a very dangerous try lane from Scary Faces. Yep, over on the side of BU, come with me, gonna pick up the anti-mage Necroman. Gonna accompany him on the Earthshaker for now. Mind control on his core SF. Bignum gonna be picking up the Wyvern once again. And finally, in the offlane, we've got Zai on that Nyx Assassin. Pretty kick-ass claws on Zai right now, and well, going up against a Darkseer. Darkseer versus any melee hero, usually gonna be pretty Darkseer favored, and I don't think Nyx Assassin is really an exception there. At least Nick Sasson will be getting his levels, and that's really all he wants. But up towards this mm -hmm. top lane is going to be where the most blood is going to be spilled. Bignum and Necroman, both just on their heroes that they're playing, have a lot of defensive capabilities, but not necessarily defensive capabilities that are good versus what Scary Faces have. Like, yeah. It's mostly magic damage up here. Yeah, the Cold Embrace is not going to prove too valuable, I don't feel, at least early on. I really like the decision from SFZ to put pressure into CWM early. If he's able to get a good start, that's not going to bode well for them in this one. And they saw Quista on their anti-mage get a good start. And even with a few missteps throughout that mid-game, they're able uh, to pull out a win. So it'll be an interesting one here, although I feel like Mind Control should have a great time in this mid lane for BU. And it's finally a change of pace for Mind Control. Like in the mm -hmm. previous two games, he's been crapped on because of the lane scenarios that he's find himself in. But up against the DK, you occasionally have to deal with Breathe Fire Harass, but that's exactly what the bottle is for. And I assume he's going to be getting that one. I'd be surprised if he goes for a bottleless build. But yeah, him versus State should be a very Mind Control based build. Oh, up towards top, the pain starts already. Come with me. Forced to blink out Necroman, forced to throw out a fissure. He has a lot of clarity, so he could do that in the future. But man, yeah. that's just a small taste of things to come. If anyone not anti-mage gets caught with that disruption i'm pretty sure they're just dead yeah and uh, you definitely see the potency there the fisher saving come with me's life effectively but once the chakra magic comes out uh, for eknart's coddle here they're not worried about spamming out these skills whereas as you mentioned uh necroman is gonna have to burn through these clarities to in order in order to keep his anti-mage up so the question about this game for bu is can we win enough in the side lanes to redeem the fact that we're going to be under a lot of pressure in the mid lane. I think in the mm -hmm. uh, in the top lane rather. I think in the mid lane that's going to be a pretty clear victory. I'd be very surprised if my control ends up losing this lane or even, you know, draws even in this lane. Bottom lane's a little bit more of a question mark. Ramsey's already doesn't have that much mana, but that's what Soul Ring is for and he could just like sit in the creep wave with the iron shell on him. He doesn't have to worry about much. Eknart though trapped in the trees. He has another Tango, so he can't eat his way out, and it looks like it's actually going to be a disruption onto the Anti-Mage once again. Split Earth is there, Illuminate is there as well, come with me, has enough time to blink out, so he will survive for a little while longer, but still, this Anti-Mage is getting no farm, he has 3 CS. One Tango left as well in his pockets, so come with me. Pressured heavily early on, and that's exactly what SFZ intend to do here. Zai's going to be forced out of lane bottom, but he will pick up a Haste Rune here, so can put some Harass into Ramsey's. Does have the Surge available, but... Uh, it's going to be just fine for now. Uh, meanwhile, Necroman rotating out. Finding that bounty rune top lane is going to deny that from State 21. Someone got put into a bubble. It's coming up towards top. Illuminate going to fly wide, at least on the anti-mage. Connects onto a harpy, poor thing. Didn't Dying even see it coming, but uh, yeah. Attack. Towards top, now that the chakra magic is up, the mana is sure as hell going to flow for scary faces. Just, you know, having Shadow Demon always with 170 mana is always a potent, potent threat towards BU. And come with me... He kind of wants to go for stats, as anti mage, that's always what you want to get that additional health pool. You may consider just getting more spell shield in this lane, honestly. Yeah. 
it could be a, a lot worth a lot of value. Uh, each point is quite a good scale for the anti mage here, but either that or maybe the lower cooldown on the blink. Uh, either way, he has is gonna have to build a little more defensively than he would like to. Mind control getting a bit low mid lane has the bottle charges though to keep him safe, and uh, the DK actually holding his own 14 CS. I mean, DK usually is going to have a pretty good time up against a Shadow Fiend, at least. He'll get his CS more or less, and he'll get a little bit of experience to boot as well. But still, it's going to be mind control to hold a slight CS lead that I expect would grow larger as time mm -hmm. progresses. Bottom lane, it's a very similar situation towards the mid, as, you know, it's just reversed. But up towards top, we still have a really big problem, as, at least for BU, no one has died right now. Necroman and Bignum have been keeping far enough away from the Shadow Demon, that it's always been the Anti-Mage to get initiated upon. He has the Spell Shield and Blink, so if anyone's going to get initiated upon, you want it to become with me, as awkward as that sounds. Yeah, and uh, Krista going to put some Lightning uh, Storm Harass into him as well. Come with me, sitting always pretty low in this lane, in lane it seems. Only the one Tango left, he is going to uh, ferry out some new ones because of that, and does still have to, to his name. Double Damage Room going to be picked up mid lane, still not level 6 though is the state 21 dk so not going to make a rotation just yet all right so with a 3v3 lane like this it's kind of surprising that we're pushing four minutes we have no first blood down towards bottom lane though mind control going to show his face unfortunately zai not in a great position to actually mm -hmm. get an impale off so it's a clean escape there for the dark seer no real threat there but uh yeah again we have a situation where if either of these heroes in the mid lane actually leaves the mid lane the towers, whoever the tower of whoever leaves is going to be in a lot of pressure. Like Shadow Fiend, just with the amount of base damage he has, DK soon to have that level six mark. It's a very delicate situation in the mid lane. It's kind of going to force both these heroes to stick in the mid lane and not help out their side lanes. Yeah, and, and the supports may get a little bit more for BU, being that they do have their jungle here. But all this pressure. Uh, from Quista and crew is probably going to try and bring down this tier 1 fairly early. No points in Edict as is pretty common on the Lesh Rock. Cold Embrace going to be drop, dropped onto Come With Me to keep him safe. So at least they have that tool for now. Uh, three levels on the Wyvern uh, with the uh, very common stat build there. But here comes the pressure into the tower and they are going to get that Soul Catcher onto Come With Me on top of the Disruption. But the Splitter is not going to be there from Quista so he will be able to back off. Yeah, it got stalled up by the Fissure. Also, the Fissure fired off the Illuminate, so that uh, also whiffed the Anti-Mage. So not taking that much damage at all. And uh, for Necroman, I mean, that's, I guess, a mana win. You spend less mana canceling that than the enemies actually spend to start it. But yeah, they have Chakra Magic, so any sort of mana wins are going to be very short-term. And over towards mid lane state, he has a double damage rune. This is going to bring the tower down by quite a bit. Mind Control can clear the Creep Wave, but as far as killing off this DK... Unless State really messes up, or at least Mind Control, he needs help. Here comes said help, it's Zai. He left the lane with his first Vendetta to go top. Him and Necroman now thinking about going towards mid, but that didn't do anything. And while Zai is gone, Ramses is actively pushing Zai's his bottom lane. Bottom yeah, and with these illusions, maybe State 21 even pops them and rotates into the bottom lane. It looks like that will be the call. Top lane, though, they're going to find out. Come with me. He will get cold and braced up. Lightning Storm will be there. Should be able to blink out, and will be able to do so. Fish are going to catch three as well, but meanwhile... Radiant side pushing that bot lane. Radiant, our uh, Dire Glyph is available, but this T1 probably sure to fall here. Yeah, there's no one. Oh, actually, well, Zai is here, so maybe he can hold it. Maybe even if he's lucky, he gets a deny. But yeah, with just the Ion Shell is constantly killing off the creep wave, Zai can pull off the creeps, and that's about all he can do. He's going to throw an Impale. TP's coming in. It's my control. They already used the stun. They have to land all the raises right now. Is it going to be enough? Not quite. It drops both of them very, very low, and the tower is unfortunately not in deny range, but. Yeah, that's a TP for staff for mind control to get pretty much nothing, and well, I guess mid lane is no one's yeah. farming there actively, but uh, top lane in the meantime still struggling for BU. It just seems like scary faces have a lot more potent heroes in more lanes. Yeah, I mean the rotation is fine for mind control because as you mentioned that mid lane is vacant, but still they're not really gaining much elsewhere, and uh, Ramsey's having a great, excuse me, great time in his lane. He's going to be able to pick up that mechanism pretty darn soon. And then one mechanism is up, uh, well, Lestrac probably not going to have any points of Edict since he's in a full offensive trial lane, not getting a lot of experience, but just having the mech, maybe even Lestrac grabbing one point in Edict a little bit earlier, then they could just five-man towers like nobody's business. Mind Control getting into a fight with State 21 over in the mid lane, turns back for a couple raises, secondary raise, not quite going to land, and it's both these heroes really roughed up in the mid lane. Still no kills. 
Yeah, Space 21 has enough to kill off this Shadow Fiend if he jumps up, but no vision uphill, nighttime. Uh, and the rune spawning soon. Doesn't want to get over aggressive mind control. Going to jump towards that bot room. Ramsey's going to be a little bit late to the party to contest here. So he should be able to fill up his bottle. As Space 21 will do the same top lane. I'm actually very surprised that there's no kills on the Shaker or the Winter River. And like those are the heroes I would expect to be under mm. the most pressure up on this top lane. But after all said and done, Come With Me has 34 CS to the 44 of Lashrac. There aren't any kills on this top lane. This offensive tri lane, though it was off to a very, very good start, is not really going that great for scary faces simply because they're not connecting their combos on non anti mage targets. Yeah, they, they need to try and kill off these supports. I mean, they're the only ones keeping uh, the anti-mage alive. So if they're able to catch one of them out, it's surely a death. But either way, they just kind of keep going for this AM who has been able to build as he pleased, three points in stats. And uh, he's looking fairly good despite having all this pressure in his face. As you mentioned, 38 CS now. And now we have a unexpected visitor. We got Zai, who has smoke right now. So there's no way it's going to see this one coming. Radiant. But there's a sentry here. Yeah. So maybe they could stall them out with Necromancer Fissure. Perhaps that's going to happen. Come with me, though. Dropping down a half HP before anything starts out. But here comes Zai. He's going to get disrupted before he get the Impale off. Fissure's going to land onto two. Zai's spike and land to Quista with a Splinter Blast there. Quista will be first blood. And Eknart also stuck. Should be a secondary kill. That's two for BU. Looking for a third. As Shadow gets hit with the Vendetta. That's going to be a double for Come With Me and a 3 0 lead for BU. No rotation coming from either the Dragon Knight or the Darkseer there. Uh, Space 21 will be able to get some uh, some consolation for that kill top lane. Does find the tier 1 in the mid, but still great engagement for BU there. Very nice impale out of the Disrupt onto the Leshrac from Zai, as you would expect from him. And his first rotation is a big one. And when your offensive tri lane gets thrashed that hard, generally the first thing to do afterwards is split it up. And that's exactly what's going to be happening for Scary Faces. The Shrak now down towards the bottom lane. Maybe cramping Ramsey style, perhaps. But now, who do they actually send on this top lane? Because Anti Mage is level six. Big Num's pushing that level mark as well. So just the curse into right clicks from Anti Mage is a really serious threat towards someone as soft as, say, a Keeper of the Light. This top lane is no longer truly viable for Scary Faces. I would say, even though it again had a really good start, it, it's a lost lane. And my control actually has a haste rune. He's going to turn things around with no backup whatsoever. Trying to go for Quista and Ramses. He is going to get the edict or get the kill on the Lashrak rather with the raise. Now looking for Ramsey's still a lot of haste rune left. Ramsey's double ion shell gonna keep him safe right now but it's a fourth kill for BU and still there's no rotation from the scary faces side. They've taken out a tier one mid lane but that's about it. Now Shadow's in a little bit of trouble. Necroman Fissure gonna connect with the double raise. That's another kill for BU. They're just feeding off of scary faces one at a time. Yeah, meanwhile, Zai keeping uh, the Dragon Knight at bay mid lane keeps his mana completely empty, so he can't make a rotation with a TP. Even if he had the mana to TP, he wouldn't be able to do much. He gets a Dragon Tail off on the Zai, but Zai will be just fine. And this Dragon Knight thus far, he's been able to take a tower, but he hasn't been able to do much at all in this early game. And that's exactly what you pick the DK on top of the Left Shark for is this early aggression. They do find a kill top uh, bottom lane on the Shadow Fiend, and that's a big one going the Last Rock's way. It'll give him his level 6, but still, this early game looking scary for SFZ. Unfortunately for the Shadow Fiend there, Necroman was just like 5 mana off of his Vizier, which could have turned things around. They could have easily gotten a kill if there was just a little bit more mana on the Shaker there, but yeah, it's a Shadow Fiend death. It's going to be costly in the end, but still, your 4 kills up. Considering your early game status, you're feeling just fine if you're BU. This DK is still farming a lot for scary faces. Uh, probably going to go straight for that Shadow Blade, then he's going to actively start doing stuff in this game. Because up till now, uh, the DK hasn't really been doing that much. Oh, Shadowy gets caught in the retreat with a curse. One raise will obliterate him. We have three he other heroes up in this top lane for scary faces, but can they actually do anything right now? Come With Me has an embrace right behind him, so killing him off is a challenge. Yeah, and this is giving ES space in the bot lane to find his level 6. He's got the Echo Sam now. Dragon Tail is going to go out onto Mind Control. They're not going to hit the Illuminate, though. Jump forward from Come With Me aggressively is going to try and go into the Coddle. No Dragon Tail available to Space 21. And Come With Me going to be able to fog himself. Dragon Tail is up now, though. And he will be able to get it off. Come With Me a little bit too far forward. Does get picked there. And they are going to chase forward, trying to find Bignum on the back lines, though. Zai will pick off Eknart. He's going to pay with his life for it. Now, either way, two for one. Going the way of SFZ, they do have the Dragon Form up. Glyph is going to be popped out. Edict here, as well as the Dragon Form. They will be able to bring down this Tier 1. And finally, some of their early game potential being shown. And that was a really messy engagement there from BU. 
you don't really make that jump in as anti-mage unless you have maxed out blink but level mm -hmm. one blink cooldown it's only 12 seconds but it feels like forever and uh well zai got a pretty good impale unfortunately couldn't really get the kills afterwards Dyer's the splinter blast was also a little bit miscued there from Bigum yep. targeted the wrong guy so you know, a couple of mistakes being made from bu also taking that as a 4v5 since necroman was getting a little bit of farm down towards bottom. It costs them a Chiron Tower, it costs them a couple of kills, yet still, despite that, I don't think they're going to be Radiant's feeling that bad about it. Attack. Come With Me has his power treads completed. He, mm -hmm. what was that is? Yeah, he has a sword coming out to him as well, so Battle Fury is well on its way. Not going to be the fastest one by any stretch, but hey, it's coming. Yeah, and considering, all things considered, considering his early game, it's pretty damn good timing, I feel. Uh, Zai bot lane is going to try and find out this Coddle here with an Impale. They do have a Sentry down, but the Fisher into the Impale will be a dead Eknart here. And it looks like the Earthshaker baiting this out a bit doesn't have quite enough mana. The Impale is actually going to whiff from Zion. They are going to get TP rotations in. No Dragon Form for 10 seconds, though, for space 21. So rotation is going to be a bit late. They're trying to bring in the SD and the Leshrock from the side. They will find Come With Me out. Or did Quista see him? It seems like that wasn't the case. Come with me, able to blink out Winter's Curse. There onto the Dragon Knight Glimmer Cape, though. He will Dragon Form, get the Dragon Tail off, and the Illuminate bringing down the Nyx Assassin. And this will queue up another tower push. They'll try to get the Deny off. Won't be able to do so. Last hit goes the way of State 21. And they could even queue this up with the Dragon Form just being popped for a Tier 2 push here. Lightning Storm going to bounce through to Necroman. He will get the Fisher off, though. Mechanism going to keep the wave fairly healthy for now. And the Edict doing work all on the that tower alongside that Corrosive fire. Breath. But Glyph can be popped out by BU. Zai still down for 10 seconds and come with me well out of position to fight here in the bot lane. So it looks like BU will sack this tower. It's going to be a the first tier 2 tower of the game for Scary Faces. And so we just already see the value of Glimmer Cape DK getting cursed yet takes pretty much no damage from it because no one is actively there to hit him because they just can't see the dragon. So, tower destroyed now by Scary Faces, and this is the type of uh, play that you would expect from a team that has mm. a Lashrak and a DK. They're going to be looking to take down all these tier 2 towers, and if BU aren't actually all there at the same time, if Zai can't even afford to get his spike Carapace off because he's constantly chain stunned, or if Mind Control's in the front, something like that, then BU will just have to sacrifice these towers. They're relying a lot on Come With Me to get his Battle Fury and get his farm. And that is still a very good strategy, but uh, at a certain point, you're losing a little bit too much in the way of your structures. And Scary Faces, just in 30 seconds, they could go again. This time with another 2,000 gold up on state, we have almost Bloodstone completed on Lashrac. This Death Ball, maybe it was a little bit slow to get rolling, but it is going to mm -hmm. start to roll. Yeah, Quista finding his farm now has two components uh, towards that Soul Booster, so almost the full Bloodstone here. And then he'll have that in due time as well. They've got the full mech, as we mentioned earlier, on Ramsey. So had a great time in lane. He's got 1,800 gold in his pockets. And the Ogre Club to come out for State 21 as the makings of his BKB. Zai actually has a buckler. That's not something we ordinarily see on Assassin. Like, even mm -hmm. if you're going to be going for a mech... Uh, Nyx Assassin is very, very mana starved throughout yeah. most of his games. So, like, this is an expensive is item attack. to be building for Zai. I fear that he's not going to have enough mana to actually use everything that he wants to. Yeah, uh, he got went for the bottle and the arcane, so maybe that's the reasoning behind that. But yeah, it, it is a little bit odd to see your Nyx build a mech. Uh, they don't want to obviously give that to the Shadow Fiend who has built a blink but already the mech advantage for sfz and they're gonna look to push it top lane last or uh, a tier second tier two of the game gonna be taken down for bu without contest and there's no glyph they'll trade a tier one mid but the map control is starting to jump heavily in sfz's favor and they're gonna need to find ways to farm come with me he's gonna jump over to the enemy jungle uh, for now but he's kind of going to have to retreat because it seems like Scary Faces aren't done yet. They pushed that tower without using their Dragon Form. Now they're going to pop it. Bignum's here. Necroman is here. But there's no Blink Dagger on Earthshaker. Is very close to it, but not quite there. It's a two-for-one tower trade so far. And Scary Faces is putting a little bit of damage into the Tier 3. But it seems like that will just about be it. I think that's actually okay for BU. Like, losing these yeah. Tier 2 towers when you have an Anti-Mage is troublesome because it's hard to reinforce him if he's caught out of position or something like that. But at the same time, they don't lose tier 3s, and those are the really important ones, and Anti-Mage is getting a lot of farm. If Necroman yeah. somehow grabs a Blink Dagger if he survives this fight, then it's going to be really hard for Scary Faces to break high ground in the future. 
Vacuum is going to whiff there from Ramsey's, unfortunately, on Desire. They're going to have to surge back State 21. Tried to glimmer him in for a Dragon Tail. Not going to find it, so come with me. Split push it is happening completely freely, and he has the blink available to get out here. Disruption? No, the Demonic Purge is going to be there from range. He's going to be caught out by Eknard as well. They have vision of him. Quista going to come through. He actually whiffs the split earth and come with me. Able to blink out to the north, and he should be just fine. Has a TP in hand alongside that Battle Fury and a 1,000 gold. He just walked out as if no heroes were actually there. <laughs> like, oh, there's a Lishrak. Oh, there's a Keeper of the Light. I actually just don't care about that. I'm going to leave now. Uh, Darkseer does teleport out from the Shadow Fiend in the meantime. He was sticking around the top lane a little while longer. He has his Blink Dagger now. So, though we've seen a couple of missed vacuums with a Blink Dagger vacuum wall combo, a lot more difficult to actually miss that. But uh, right now for Scary Faces, Tier 2 Tower mid lane, still an objective. Even looking at Roshan, perhaps, do they have a Medallion? Love to see that from like the Shadow Demon or Keeper or something like that. No, not gonna happen. This looks like it's gonna be Aghanim Scepter for the Keeper, a little bit more standard and a lot more directly powerful. But uh, Roshan gonna be a difficult thing for Scary Faces to pick up. Instead, they're just gonna straight push the tier two. Do they have a Blink Dagger and Shaker yet? Yes, BU finally have that item. So Scary Faces may not know about this and maybe caught unawares, but they're gonna catch Zai first, who's for some reason Blink from here. Ramses. Uh, yeah. Is under attack. Yeah, they caught him out with the blink from Ramsey. So just as you mentioned, the reveal to come for the Earthshaker, the reveal comes for Ramsey's, and he gets the vacuum off before the Psych Carapace into the Dragon Tail. Dead Zai for 30 seconds, and that's the final outer tier tower. 19 minutes in, taken down by the Radiant side. They're going to jump up to the high ground as well, looking for this tier 3. They got a Siege Creep with them and want to keep it alive, but taking a little bit too much chip damage is Space 21 at this point. Edict still doing work, though. Halfway down is this tier 3 tower already. Come with me. Just trying to split push a T1 in the top lane and does have a TP available to him. Pretty much the full makings of Vlad's as well, but he's going to force a TP back from Ramses, who is just going to vacuum him up and ion shell the wave and push him back. Everyone going to vacate the mid lane for the Radiant side. Uh, Invis or Smoke, I should say, on mind control. Trying to find someone retreating, but won't do so as it's pretty clean coming out. The Shadow Poison may have spotted Come With Me. I and think the it might have actually spotted Shadowy. Space actually is the one to get caught right now with a Fissure, but it's Mind Control on the run, gets pushed back by the Blinding Light, winding up the Requiem, does unleash it, because you might as well. But uh, once again, it's the Invis Glimmer Cape from the DK, providing some serious value to the Scary Face side, this time killing off the Shadow Fiend. I think BU are once again going to have to be on the defense, come with me on the split push play, but there's going to be another Dragon Form in 50 seconds, so Scary Faces, uh, maybe they actually can't go for that in time. Yeah, yeah the, the Shadow Fiend probably going to be up by then, unfortunately for them. They still get a nice kill, but Come With Me has had the last five or six minutes pretty much to free farm, although he's been in the wrong side of the map doing it. Uh, has been pretty safe. Nyx Assassin for Zai. Going to find a solo kill in the mid lane over onto Eknard, and he was fairly close to the Aghanim Scepter, so it's a good timing for that kill. Yeah, once Aghanim Scepter comes out on Keeper, then the infinite sustain with those pushes... Really, yeah. really difficult, and should you give a gem to the Keeper of the Light, then the Vendetta from a Nyx Assassin becomes fairly useless, I would say. So, yeah, it's important to slow down the Aghanim Scepter as best you can, but it's a Keeper of the Light. He's going to get his Aghanim Scepter eventually, and mm -hmm. that should be coming out very, very shortly as well. Uh, good time. Scary Faces still have yet to breach the high ground, truly. BU, they're still getting farm this anti-mage. Now Vlad's up on come with me, so his pushing is going to be a lot faster, and Mind Control finally starting to spend a little bit of that bank, so... Scary Faces, they're in a pretty good position right now, but the net worth, the experience, is still being held by BU, and we already mentioned how they have this pretty good late game, superior late yeah. game. Yeah, Space 21 pinging out that tier 3, which is super low mid lane. With his dragon form up, they want to be going for that, and they are going to convene mid lane once again. Quist are going to be the last to join them as they go top. Come, come with me a little bit already one step ahead of the Radiant side. Uh, anticipating this push is going to already commence the split push bot lane. Should be able to get this tier 2 fairly quickly, although his tier 3 probably going to drop beforehand. The glyph, though, is available for the dark side. They're going to get the dragon tail off onto Zai, but the spike carapus will be there. Jump for it. Echo slam onto 2. They're going to get the curse off onto Shadowway. Quista, though, going to be glimmered up by Space 21, and he's got his BKB standing on the front lines doing work on this rain racks. It's about at half HP now. Come with me. Trying to commit the split push. The glyph now finally going to be popped by the dire side and come with me chipping away at the tier three slowly but surely on the radiant side and that's going to force back sfc no casualties from either side yet scary phases still take that tier three tower put a lot of damage into the range racks which next time they push should be a very easy uh objective to take the 
Earthshaker's Echo Slam was probably the best tool from BU to defend, and unfortunately doesn't actually get that kill yet. The split push from Come With Me really putting Scary Faces on a timer, which if Come With Me was there, yeah, they probably could have taken a fight, BU, yeah. but hey, it worked out pretty well for them. Now they're going to jump straight into the Roshan pit with that Vlad's. Come With Me is pretty well sustained in doing so, but it's not that quick. If Scary Faces actually catch wind of this, this could be really bad for BU since they no longer have the Curse, they don't even have a Vendetta, they definitely don't have an Echo Slam, they're gonna catch, or Ramsey's gonna jump right in, get stunned immediately by the Spike Carapace, now Kofi's gonna jump in as well, Impale's there, Ramsey's is down! And that's one hero down, buyback in fact, but Eknart's gonna start firing off those Illuminates, and if you're BU, you cannot afford to get hit by Roshan and Illuminates at the same time, so they're gonna fall back right now, Roshan, I don't think can be take, taken by any side. Day 21 going to jump in though, he's got his 9 second BKV available to him and with Quista they're going to pop that di Diabolic Edict and it doesn't look like BU are going to contest this, they kind of just give it up and do a lot of the work for the Radiant side and now with the Aegis that they can throw on this Latrak, uh, they can definitely Your jump high ground. Well, I mean, I said it wasn't going to be taken by either side, that was assuming they actually wanted to fight for it, which clearly mm -hmm. wasn't the case. So. Aegis now on the Lashrak, it's, I think, probably still the correct decision for BU to make that retreat call, because mm. they simply just don't have the ultimates necessary. They need this Echo Slam on Necroman so badly right now. They also very desperately need Bignum's ultimate to be up on top of that, but they also need Come With Me Not to Die. Super confident in his split pushing, because it has been working throughout the entire game, yet the one time it doesn't, and he gets picked off and killed with no buyback. That's 50 seconds That's for Scary Faces to push mid. Yeah, and that's one of the first times we actually see that combo land from that trifecta of heroes. And it comes at a perfect time with the Aegis being on Tequista. They can jump high ground. They got the full BKB up on Space 21, as we saw in the last engagement. Still nine seconds for that. The range rack's super low, as you mentioned. Already the support's coming out from BU, trying to push shove out this mid lane, knowing uh, that... SFC are going to march down it, and we'll see Quista do some pushing out of this lane bottom to deter Come With Me, and then probably join his squad mid lane. Alright, so for BU, they will have all their ultimates for this one. They have mm -hmm. to go through the Shrek twice, though. Whenever you're relying on your ultimates to uh, actually take a team fight, or, you know, substantially win a team fight, hold high ground and whatnot, <laughs> uh, the Aegis is your worst nightmare. Of course, BKB on DK. Also not that fun to deal with, so I actually don't know if BU can hold this high ground unless they seriously get, you know, Miracle Ultimates, like 3-4 man in the Echo Slam, or 3-4 man into any ultimate, really, is what they need at this point. Yeah, I could see SFZ just marching up, taking maybe a single Rax and backing off because the Anti Mage respawns. Uh, I could see them playing it safe, but this lane is definitely in a bit of peril at this point. The enemy is down 40 plus seconds. No buyback. They probably are able to get up to high ground with about 25 seconds left on that respawn timer. It's going to be close either way. So, I mean, there is also daytime, which is just breaking now for Eknart. So, mm -hmm. the Illuminate now heals, and that's always really ridiculous. So, really scary mm -hmm. faces. They have a lot of time to actually bring down these Raxes, and if they could just spend that time to get good positioning, get more corrosive hits on the Raxes, then I think they could very safely do this and just rely on the Illuminate's heal because Aghanim Scepter, Keeper of the Light is pretty freaking balanced. Yeah, one of the probably, I mean, I in my opinion, the best Hags upgrade in the game, but either way, uh, with this kind of lineup, it synergizes extremely well. And yeah, the 1800 gold onto a Shadow Wave. Maybe he finds a Force Staff sometime soon as well to help them out. But they are going to group up mid lane. Quista is a little bit far out. Uh, maybe just shoves in this bottom lane and joins his team here. This is going to allow the Anti Mage to pretty much respawn, though, before they're able to break high ground. Maybe Scary Face is going to go all in and try to take two sets of Raxes. At that point, if they take that, I'm pretty sure it's just game. But actually doing that, that's a separate question entirely. Necroman off to the side right now. Has to make sure that nothing interrupts his Blink Echo Slam because he has a pretty good one right now. He's going to throw the Fissure first. Quista dropping really low really quickly. But he does have that Aegis. That's what it's there for. Anti-Mage up in seven seconds. They jump forward for Quista. Spike actually misses. Now Mind Control has to fall back. And Space is going to charge forward. Looking for Bignum. Lands the Dragon Tail. Lands the Breathe Fire as well. Mech going to keep him alive for right now. Blinding Light going to push Nyx Assassin back into a whole swarm of enemies. But the Melee Rax is still in a lot of trouble right now. Space uses his BKB already. Necroman just wandering in. Echo Slam connects onto zero heroes. There's a Fissure. That's not that great either. Impale is going to connect onto two from the top side. Mind Control pops the BKB. Looking for that Requiem. Does quite a bit of damage to everyone. They take down the Lashrax Aegis. That's about it right now. Ramsey's going to slip away. All Albeit barely another Luminate gonna put a lot of hurt into the BU side. Come with me. Stun up on the side 
Mana Void onto the DK, not gonna do it, but he will take the kill in the end, but Quista now pops the DKB, kills off the Shaker, now in a 1v3 scenario. No curse though to cut through that BKB, and another Illuminate's gonna force BU to fall back. Still, Raxes have been taken for Scary Faces, they can fall back with a clean win. Yeah, and they will do so content with their spoils there. Uh, Quista getting super low in front of the Rax, but that one Illuminate just healing him up to about half HP, and then the Echo Slam and the Spike from Necroman and Zai, respectively, both missing. And Quista up far too long with that first life, is able to come back with the BKB pop, bring down the Earthshaker, and walk his way out of the base. So things looking very good for SFZ after a bit of a shaky start, and they'll take that first Rax uh, sub 25 minutes. It's not quite over yet. BU have mm -hmm. Shadow Fiend and Antimage, both of whom are very good at pushing out super creeps. Scary faces really need a secondary set of Raxes before they feel truly comfortable, but hell, it's only 26 minutes in the game. They can, you know, progress pretty steadily onwards from here, and unless Come With Me gets, you know, some insane items in the next couple minutes, which, you know, it should be Mantis style, which is good, but nothing, uh, nothing extraordinary for, versus the Scary Faces side, then... BU, they're going to find themselves with less and less income because super creeps do give less, fewer places to farm, more dangerous you know, areas in the map just because scary faces are going to be roaming around. It's yeah. not looking that great for BU. They need to decisively win a team fight, but so far their skills just aren't connecting properly. Yeah, and uh, now I didn't see the mechanism get off in that last engagement for the dire side, but now with the greaves up, the mana issues that you were speaking on earlier shouldn't be as big of a problem for Zai, of course, as that is a free cast. So that'll be nice to add to the team fight of BU. Come with me, he's picked up his Yasha and is pretty damn close to a Manta if that's what he opts for here as well. So things getting a little bit better for BU. And as we mentioned earlier, SFC on a bit of a timing window. Going to need to look to continue to push. They do have an Illusion Rune onto State 21 as well as the Dragon Form available. And the top lane is pushing in. So we'll see if they jump forward. Maybe BU are able to take down this bottom tier too. It's fortifiable, but uh, Scary Faces, it's still daytime for a little while longer, so they have a little bit of an opening to go in with infinite sustain, and all the tower's already going to start to burn to the acid. Bignum's going to take flight right now. Arctic Burn, Splinter Blast, just doing anything he can do to push everyone back. Necroman has his Echo Slam, and this one's definitely going to have to land. If it misses again, and if Scary Faces take a very similar fight to the one in the mid lane, then I think it's just all over for BU. Come With Me is still pushing this bottom lane. Radiant's and he will put Scary Faces on a timer with attack. the push coming into the bottom lane and with the fact that it's going to be nighttime soon. Scary Faces make the right decision, they back off. Yeah, State 21 getting a little too low there as well. No Aegis in their pockets. Uh, no Roshan for at least another three plus minutes at this point. So perhaps that's maybe the last window of opportunity to take another lane for SFZ is as soon as that Rosh comes up and the first daytime. They're in, they can go high ground there, but definitely BU have the wherewithal to contest Roche. Winter's Curse, Echo Slam, Requiem, and even the Impale from the Knicks, all very good around the pit. It's going to be a moderately long Roshan respawn, so uh, favoring BU, obviously the longer the Roshan mm -hmm. is going to take to respawn, the better it is for them. More time to farm, more time to get control of their lanes, but right now, they're hunting for blood. Zai's leading the way, he's smoked and vendetted, so double invis, obviously need two sources of true sight for that. That's not how it works, but uh, the smoke is there from Scary Faces, and they're running in the complete opposite direction. <laughs> Was this smoke spotted? There's an Observer Ward in the mid lane. I don't know where exactly they popped it. I feel like they were in the tree line around here, so I doubt that they actually uh, were able to spot it, but just maybe some lucky or fortunate uh, or good game sense coming out from SFZ. Uh, they will drop an aggressive ward. This will help come with me split push here after, but yeah, not exactly what BU wanted. Well, maybe Come With Me is going to play the bait role right now. Maybe Scary Faces just don't give a damn. Obviously, they would like to wait for daytime before they actually make this push, but still, mid lane is, TP is uh, pushing in. Top lane is pushing in towards the dire base as well. So, uh, it's just going to be a whole bunch of jockeying for position. No one actually mm -hmm. getting any sort of decisive lead off of those double smokes. But, hey, as long as BU are not being pushed actively, they're happy. Roshan is going to be up in, well, at this point, like three minutes or something like that. So, Scary Face, I think this is the time to get a couple more items. Maybe get an Assault Caress if you can on State 21. Get, yep. uh, well, it seems like it's going to be an Octarine for Quista. You know, these are pretty big items if Scary Faces can actually farm it up by the next daytime phase. Yeah, it's going to be a little rough for State 21. Octarine Core may be a little bit more attainable here for Quista. 
Uh, he's already farming up that enemy jungle. Daytime is going to be pretty much simultaneous with the Roche spawn. So if SFZ are diligent about being at that pit in time, they may be able to bring that down and have the full daytime duration to look to go high ground. A uh, second lane of racks could be very crippling for BU, although you mentioned it earlier, they deal decently well with Mega Creeps. All right, so I think until the next daytime phase is there, it's probably just going to be random farm. Mm -hmm. Ramsey's got stunned by some spike carapace. That's interesting. He was nowhere close. But up towards top, come with me. He's going to get hit with a split earth. Disrupted as well. He should be fine unless Quista has another split earth, which he doesn't. And there's no one else here to actually catch up to come with me. Although they're going to use the demonic purge. He can blink right into the ancients and no one's actually there to intercept him. So come with me is free and clear. Holding up to 3200 gold. Buyback is a necessity at this point for the anti-mage. Oh, Zai though. Vacuum back into a dragon tail. No time to do anything. He's going to get bowled over by the Illuminate. And with no Nyx Assassin, no buyback. It's an opening for Scary Faces to at least test for the Nyx Assassin buyback. Yeah, SFZ has been really good about having lane vision, and they've caught out Zai a couple of times, and it's not really for bad play from him. He hasn't been super out of position, but either way, he's just saw two heroes over to the west in that off lane, felt a little bit safe in that mid lane, but Ramsey's with this blink has proved much more effective in this game three than he has in game one on his DS already. They're going to jump in space 21, look to find the Winter Wyvern. They're just backing everyone off, though. They force out the Glyph and the Edict doing work on that tier three. He's going to now back off, get Chakra magic up, bring down the tier three. They'll go into this rain tracks as well. Everyone going to have to dodge the Illuminate, don't want to heal up that Dragon Knight, but the Guardian's Greaves keeping everyone healthy on the Radiant side. They're putting some punishment into the Raxes here. Edict should be able to finish off the Rax there. Quista going to have to pop his BKB, but they over Lap the disruption on the split earth, not gonna hit that onto come with me. The winter's curse is there onto Quista. After the Requiem came out, they will bring down the Lesh Rock early. He's got a short respawn timer because of the Bloodstone, but everyone turning tail and running Echo onto two with the Mana Void on top. Three down for SFZ. They get a range racks force, but now state 21 is going to be chased down by come with me it seems he has no mana void available but no tp for space 21 and even with that extra move speed from the dragon form the manta going to be able to keep come with me chasing and this is a great timing for uh bu to take a fight like this as uh, roche going to be up in about a minute yeah, it's still range racks to fall in favor of scary faces which is nice but not necessarily worth what they actually paid for down towards bottom lane mm -hmm. quista they jump by come with me once again. You really need a basher if you're going to take that kill by yourself as anti mage. But BU, I think you can call that a hold. Really good follow up yep. to the Echo Slam. Uh, pretty awkward initiation onto the Lestrak, but they do force him out of that fight relatively early. So, you know, they use their uh, Rax's health bars as best as possible. And now Roshan's going to be up just in a couple of seconds with the DD rune there. I once again don't know if BU can actually go for this one. So they still don't have an Echo Slam on Necroman, but. Uh, yeah, if they held once, that obviously means that they can hold again, potentially, but next time it's going to be a lot harder now that Lestrak has an Octarine core. This guy just got so much more tanky, and this is going to do a lot of da extra damage as well, so BU need to replicate that defense two or three more times before they're actually in a truly winning position, especially now that there's an Assault Karas up on the DK. Yep, yeah, Octarine Core and the AC to come out now for SFC. They're going to be a lot stronger the next push around, and maybe they even have an Aegis in hand. I feel like BU is absolutely forced, Echo Slam or not, to contest this Roshan here. Everyone going to group up from both sides and do the pit dance, and we'll see who ends up coming out on top. They're going to look to find an advantage early, though, is BU with Zai jumping forward. He'll find Ramses into the jungle, and that's a dead Darkseer, Greaves or not, and this means pretty much Roshan going BU's way. They're going to jump forward and try to find more. State 21 is going to be able to Glimmer Cape for now, but the Sentry is going to be dropped. He'll BKB, but he gets cursed through it. Right click down. That's his seven second charge, and now both the DK and Darks here on the sideline. No buyback. This could be game changing for BU picking up this Roche. Oh, for sure. Like, not only just they get the Aegis for themselves, but they deny it away from the Lishrak, from the DK. Mm -hmm. They have a Desolator on the Shadow Fiend, so killing off Roshan with that, and a little bit more double damage. Not that much more from Come With Me, but uh, they'll take down the Roshan pretty quickly, and Scary Faces won't even try to touch this. So it should be a double life for Come With Me, and he's going to get a lot of cash after all said and done as well. It's 2,800 gold. Oh no, it's actually an Aegis on Mind Control. That's fine as well, since he has a Desolator, but uh, yeah, Come With Me should be looking at a Basher, of course, holding buyback, and if scary faces get picked off like that, then obviously they can't make a push happen. I really like how they made the push in the last time, just sliding up to the top lane, not having to worry about a deadly echo slam or anything like that. But 
now that the anti is getting a lot more farm, his split push is going to be a lot faster, and Scary Faces, they can't really get to the top lane while Daytime is still active. By the time DK gets there, Knight is going to fall, and therefore Keeper of the Light gets a lot worse. Yeah, they need to keep this uh, Shadow Demon around their Leshrock and try and find a pick here. Necromant's showing in lane. They do have the Blink Dagger, but it's a little bit too late to jump in. Necromant's still trying to push this out, is by his Lonesome. They drop the Cliff Ward so they know there's not too many around, but now they will just see, coming into vision, Bignum on the Wyvern. And we'll see if they make an attempt here. It looks like SFC going to play this very safe considering the Aegis in hand. Come with me. Getting into a dual bot lane with State 21. He's got Zai with him as well. And they burn all the mana of this DK. DK still standing in the front though. So BU getting the impression that he does have backup behind him. And with Quista now joining the fray, that is the case. I believe that was also the 6 second BKB charge in the DK. Not exactly a huge win, but hey, it's yeah. a BKB charge that you force out without putting yourself in too much danger. So you can classify that one as a win for BU. There's a 4,000 gold on this Anti-Mage, so he's getting a lot of farm pretty comfortably. Messing with Scary Face's heroes, and well, at a certain point, this Anti-Mage will be able to pressure the towers significantly of Scary Faces should they, you know, abandon their lane Dyer's and leave the Anti-Mage to his own devices. Definitely not recommended at this point. BU, I think, are in a pretty good position now, honestly, and yeah. you don't even have to look at the graphs to figure out that they're uh, in that position. 15k in experience, not as much in gold, not nearly as much, but still, Scaryface's momentum seems to have stopped. They really need a secondary set of racks as a full set, not just the range on top. Yeah, and the, and the third core almost seems a bit more useful for BU than does this Darkseer for Ramses. He seemed to fall off a couple of times uh, thus far. He's going to jump forward perhaps in mid lane for Come With Me, but no immediate follow-up, and the backup is here for BU. So both teams playing a little bit safe at this point. Well, it's still farm. It's still going to be a pickoff battle if... Whoever gets a pickoff, honestly, will be in such a better position through the upcoming minutes, and mm. that might be happening up on top lane. It's Nyx Assassin on the hunt, sees Lashrax, sees Ramses. There was a gem floating around the Scary Faces side, but Quist is going to get jumped, Impale, not going to connect, and, well, there goes Zai. He's free and clear. But BU, like, look at the creep equilibrium in all these lanes. You wouldn't really expect them to be one yeah. and a half Raxes behind, given the way the creeps are flowing right now. Another gem's going to be picked up by Eknart, so... Gonna try to again, once again grab map control, at least from this this uh, Nyx Assassin, but BU, they're pretty much equalizing their lanes. This Rax's advantage doesn't seem to be affecting them at all at mm -hmm. this point. Yeah, it seems that SFZ is a bit scared of the Aegis being carried for another two minutes still by BU, so they haven't been able to jump too far out into the lanes. The Keeper of the Night is not present mid lane, so as I could have scouted them out, but looking for someone around the periphery of the Radiant base and won't find anyone just yet. He's going to run through the trees here. Does have the Blink Dagger available, but not going to jump in as most of his team was a little bit too far back. Oh, he's spotted right now. Impale's going to be thrown. Only connects into Eknard, however. Necroman's going to throw a fissure, which will connect onto two. And Zai needs to blink out of here so desperately. Will force that down to the south. Guardians himself up as well as goes into Vendetta. Sentry drops, so it's a little bit too late. They need another Sentry, but the Surge target, the Darkseer, has no detection, so Zai is free and clear. Radiant's In the meantime, just a minor distraction, because the Tier 2 is taking Radiant a beating right now. It's fortified, fortified, but still with the minus armor from Mind Control and the pure damage from Come With Me. This tower should be dropping without too much of a problem. Oh, Zai up on the sidelines, gets hit with the Dragon Tail. DK doing what he can, but it's not that much in all honesty. Another Fissure's gonna connect, now Mind Control Requiem's gonna wind up, hit onto everyone's space, has to run away right now. They have to run through the wall if they actually want to chase this one, BU. Zai's looking for another Impale right now. It's Eknart to be in the worst position, and well, he's not getting hit with any CC. Gets put into a bubble right now, should be final though. There's an Impale waiting for him, that will also not connect. Come with me, pops a BKB, he really wants to die this tier three. I don't know if that's the correct decision, he has no Aegis. He'll back off right now as Quista charges forward with the BKB. He's gonna get cursed up, Mind Control doing what damage he can right now. He's the one with the Aegis, but it's gonna time out very shortly. Everyone from BU now on the retreat, Mind Control four staffed out, will be fine for a little while longer, Impale. Gonna connect onto space, 21, Necroman still has that Echo Slam. Gotta watch out for it, there it is, onto two. Space and everyone else, don't worry, three dead. for Scary Faces and Bignum, he's gonna survive that Illuminate, albeit barely, gem on the deck. Big turnaround from Necroman, and now Quista, he can't feel too comfortable about his position either. Come with me, and Mind Control still doing a lot of damage. They really need to use this Aegis, or get their full regen out of it. It looks like buyback from the Darks here, and BU will make their clean retreat. But man, what a turnaround. What is a slow, patient bait and switch from BU. Yeah, Quista using his BKB a little bit early, and they jump up into that choke point. He had no follow-up. I mean, he did a lot of damage to three heroes, but Quista had absolutely no follow-up and wasn't able to bring any of them in down, including the Aegis, uh, which was popped a little bit thereafter. But 
Yeah, not having those BKB charges and them being so low, jumping up into a choke point. Great positioning by Necroman and BU takes another win despite not taking buildings. They take another win, and it's only going to further delay the game where it's more and more into their uh, hand. Abyssal Blade on the Anti Mage. Shadow Fiend uh, looks like it's going to be an Assault Caress. Doesn't really have any components outside of this Hyperstone to, towards that, but. We have Blink Dagger, as you said, up on the Nyx Assassin, grabbed the gem away from the Keeper of the Light. Scary Faces might be in a little bit more of a desperation mode right now. They're going to go for the push because it's daytime, although at this point, going for a straight push, a lot more risky. Getting a pick off is obviously what you want to be doing all the time, but I don't know if it's going to work. They're going to run into the Anti-Mage if they're going to run into anyone at all, or they just all stand still. <laughs> okay. Oh no, they they found him. Come with me, spotted. There's the disruption. He has BKB though, so he's not gonna die here. He's even gonna turn things around and yeah, jump forward, looking for Shadowy. Mantis Tile Illusion, Shadowy's gonna get ground down. Blinding Light gonna make the illusions miss. Now with the Glimmer Cape out, Fissure's gonna miss and come with me. Leaked his mana. He has to stand still for a little while longer. Zai though gonna pick off one in the back line. That's Shadow Demon down. Ekdar's gonna get jumped as well. Keep the light down. Rams gets stunned up by the spike. Carapace. Quista pops BKB. Looking to turn things around, but he gets cursed up. And now come with me. He's gonna come right in with the cleave damage. My controls there as well. They'll kill off the Lishrak. Now looking for Ramses, who's all alone along with space. They're both going to fall, it looks like. Everyone is dying from scary faces. And wow, BU once again with the patience. And come with me getting reinforced and then some. Mid lane is still problematic, because, well, tier fours are dying. But top lane is going to be pushed, and Lestrak is the only one with the buyback. Yeah, they still have Echo Slam and the Requiem. Shadow Demon will be up, Keeper will be up, Lestrak will be up, but I don't know that it's nearly enough to mount this defense. They're losing a lane of Rax in at the least for SFZ, unless there's a big misstep from BU. Of course, Bignum isn't here, so it is 4v3, but still. Shadow is going to be caught out, and that's already going to gain a numbers advantage there. For BU, and that's an easy lane of racks, and perhaps more going the way of BU. Blinding light, so annoying, yet not good enough. And another Luminate's gonna fly through, which will be returned by the Spike Carapace. Rax is down. They have a lot of minus armor, so they're gonna go for a second set. Only Lashrak and Keeper of the Light. Scareface's need a DK at the very least if they're gonna take this fight. And it looks like it's gonna be two Raxes. Is it gonna be three? I don't think it's gonna be three, but still, two Raxes gonna put BU at a slight Rax lead. They could fall back, they can play it slow and steady because not only are they getting all this map presence back, they're also getting a lot of cash from killing off these structures, from you know, wiping scary faces off the face of the map, and now they're gonna retreat. Tier fours, one fell. Maybe for scary faces they're in super desperation mode. Is it time to hail Mary into the Ancient? Yeah, I mean, their BKBs are far too low to do that, I believe. With the curse being up still, I mean, that pretty much takes almost a full BKB duration. It's three seconds right now, five second BKB. I don't know how much uh, the chances of SFZ bringing that down. Our Roche is up in another minute and a half-ish. Maybe that's the final stand uh, for either side. If uh, SFZ don't get Roche, they pretty much lose the game, I think. Well, it's scary faces all grouping up in the mid lane. Last time they did this, didn't really work out this uh, that well. And uh, well, there's going to be no new items in the anti mage, but he has 4,000 gold. Travels level two moon shards. That is pretty much going to be topped out. The assault crass is completed on the shadow fiend with buyback to spare. They also have an agonims being built in the assassin. He gets jumped right now. Gets put into a bubble and comes me. Gets stunned up as well. Michael going to jump right into the middle of things. Requiem is going to be wind up. Lots of BKBs drop power, so it doesn't do that much damage. But it's going to be Quist in the most trouble right now. Come with me. Is Round Tom with the curse with the mind control damage as well? They bring down the Lestrak and now state he's pretty much all alone. He has the supports near him, but come with me. He's going to go straight for Eknart. Mana Void onto two, which will take out the keeper of the light and drop ranges down very very low. Darkseer is going to find his way out of there. Shadowy is going to try to do this, but yeah, I don't think this is possible, man. <laughs> He's going to get hit with the Impale. He's going to get Mana Burn, and the Tier 4 is going to seal the deal there. Jeez. That's a 3 for nil. Illusion's going to try to do it. That's also not going to work. Everyone from BU, are they're all alive, except for Necroman, who's pseudo-dead. But uh, it's a clean win for BU, and Come With Me is going to travel right into the Radiant base and start destroying shit. Yeah, Dragon Form about to expire as well for State 21. He's going to grab a couple sets of wards here, and Ramsey's going to jump in. He's going to be very susceptible to this anti-mage, but Come With Me doesn't care too much. He's going to drop out his illusions. Luckily for State 21, the last bit of his Dragon Form is going to be able to clear those out and force back the anti-mage. Either way, they're definitely well aware Roche is up here pretty soon, and he is spawned now, so BU can take this pretty much without contest and walk up to high ground and finish this one off. Uh, pretty much all they have to do in these engagements is kill off the Leshrac, and it seems like there's just no damage aside from that for SFZ. 
and when you have Abyssal that cuts through BKB, you have the Winter's Curse that cuts through BKB, and just, well, massive amounts of damage, it's not that difficult to kill off a Lashrak. It would be yeah. a lot more difficult if he was holding a Shiva's right now, but he's just not quite there yet, and no, given the amount of farm he's been getting, it seems like that's not going to be on the docket in this game. Aegis picked up by the Shadow Fiend, Chi's still there. Looks like Bignum is going to, well, make sure that there's no invisible units in the area, then grab that Cheese. But mm -hmm. BU have one more objective, that's the bottom lane of Rax's. In game one, we saw scary faces with the high ground defense, and that ended up turning around this game. And, well, <laughs> Anti-Mage and Shadow Fiend both have buybacks. So I don't know if that can happen in this game, but never really count out a team with the Dark Seer. Things can happen that turn things around very quickly. Zai has an Agonyms. It's yeah. pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> He's probably going to burrow up here, look for a long range and bail up of the high ground if he can get it. He actually blinks up. He's going to burrow. And they are going to catch him out, though, with the Mana Leap. He's not moving anywhere with that Mana Leap. Ramsey's going to jump right in for the wall, but gets bashed up before he gets the vacuum up. Come with me dropping pretty low, but my control is full HP. He's going to go straight for Quista. Look at the damage he's doing right now. Finally, he's going to get controlled up by something. But come with me, is still alive with that BKB. He's going to take out the Darkseer. Now he's going to take out the DK. My control is going to get saved by the Winter Wyvern, and they'll take down Quista, who has buyback. He's got to use it as well. Shadowy on the run from Mind Control. One more raise. Going to kill him off. Double buybacks from the Scary Face cores. And BU, they're not too healthy. It looks like they will have to fall back right now. Necroman is standing still because he's reconnecting. And that's unfortunate for the Earthshaker. He'll drop. My control, not too healthy, but he still has the Aegis. It's a hold for Scary Faces, but it costs them their buybacks. And BU, they keep Come With Me alive. They still have the Aegis. They can keep going. Yeah, Come With Me is very healthy here. Cold Embrace is going to keep Mind Control pretty healthy as well. The BKBs are definitely down for the Radiant side. Actually, soon to come up for State 21, but he doesn't have Dragon for him, and B, you know that. They're going to jump up high ground right into a Dragon Tail, though. Split Earth is going to be there as well. No BKB up for Come With Me for another five seconds. Cold Embrace is going to keep him safe, though, and he does have the Abyssal when he comes out of this one. He's going to catch a Lightning Storm. Going to turn around, Abyssal up, Quista. Blink forward from Mind Control. The Split Earth only going to catch on to the anti mage They're actually bringing Come With Me very low, though. He's going to have to blink out mind control getting low as well that's just the ages though and a jump forward with the demonic purge on to come with me is gonna try and bring him down from shadow eight's not quite enough though they will be able to chase down bignum it seems he's actually able to fly over to the high ground so still be you with very little loss yeah but still scary faces they drive away bu from the follow-up push they bring down the ages of mind control and the Glimmer Capes are working overtime for them, but Come With Me has travels. He's gonna, actually has a Refresher Orb. He's going to go straight for Shadowy, tear the Shadow Demon a new one. Not quite fully, however. He gets Glimmered out once again. Come With Me really struggling with that uh, Glimmer Cape. Here comes Necroman. He has a Shiva's. He has a Fissure, but uh, yeah, he's kind of all alone, so not really a great place to be. Curse on the Quista right now. Reinitiation in from Come With Me. That's not going to do Jack. Zai's here as well. Going to look for Shadowy. Gets vacuumed back into a wall, however. That's Anti-Mage down, and Nyx Assassin wow. down. Quista grabs a double. And now BU are on the run. They have a buyback on the Anti-Mage. They have a buyback on the Shadow Fiend as well. But Scary Faces, I guess we can call that a win for them. Yeah. BU getting a little bit overconfident with their raw damage output. Yeah, it, it was a very... It seems like a poor decision for Come With Me to jump back in there. He got They got the Winter's Curse off on Quista, but it only lasts three and a half seconds, and it took him two seconds to re-engage there. He didn't have the BKB available. They're able to vacuum into the Split Earth and the Wall. And finally, this Anti-Mage goes down, and finally we see the Radiant side able to keep Quista up and do work in that fight. He can pick up the Shivas now, um, and this buyback is on cooldown, so do expect him to do that fairly soon. Oh man, this is a lot closer than I really thought it would be. I think I thought once BU took those two Raxes, it was mm -hmm. just BU's game. But yeah, Scary Faces coming back, and now they have another chance. Unfortunately, they don't have another Dragon form for this upcoming push, and they do have to take this top melee and the bottom set of Raxes if they want true Megas. Uh, Zai should be able to respawn in time, and Anti Mage is buyback, so mm -hmm. this is going to be a really, really tough call for Scary Faces. But this is pretty much their chance. Yeah, I feel like it's it's now or never for them for sure. Um, Roshan down as well, so they they really need to go high ground uh, with this with this momentum that they have. Seven charges on the Leshrock and his uh, Bloodstone as well, so maybe he's up in a decent time, even if they fail here. But they gotta at least force out this buyback from Come with Me. All right, so this is Scary Faces do or die moment. Uh, is there still a cheese floating around? Is that eaten? Must have been eaten, so no more yeah. cheese advantage for either side. Uh, the ultimate status, well, there's no DK ultimate. That's really the only one that's relevant. Winter's Curse can be up in 45 seconds. Echo Slam still up as well. Shaker definitely going to be alive in time for this fight. 
Uh, I don't know. Top lane pushing in, but again, these tier fours, they're vulnerable. Do scary faces actually, is this, do they go, even go for mega creeps right now? I don't think mega creeps give them enough. Like you said it before, even with an uh, Rax advantage, uh, BU are more than capable of keeping the creep equilibrium in a favorable position. So I don't know that mega creeps even really give them much. I think with the one tier four up, you go straight for throne here. Um, even if the anti mage buy, buys back, of course, they don't know this, uh, but he doesn't have the uh, double abyssal or double BKB with his refresher being down. So I feel like you go throne here. Maybe they think that if they do go for megas, the, the anti-mage will not buy back, and in that case, maybe they just do that and back off, but I still feel like the play is for the throne. It is also worth noting that if scary faces lose their DK or Lashrak, there are no buybacks. Mm -hmm. If they lose anyone else, in theory, yeah. they would be able to yank them back in with Keeper of the Light, but they don't have buybacks either, so if they die, they're just dead. Um, yeah, so this is... I think this is the time where you just all in. Like, obviously you can... I think wait for buyback in dk and lashrak but that's you know probably going to be a losing play yeah. you got to just go for it and hope that the enemy team are unable to kill the, the uh two cores the glimmer capes have again been working overtime there's no detection for the bu side they've since lost the gem there were like so many gems floating around right now mm -hmm. uh, there's one on the dk and there's probably some scattered around the map who knows but uh yeah these glimmer capes maybe will able will be able to keep state and Quista alive long enough so that they could actually bring down some structures. Yeah, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see what choice SFZ make with those with both those buybacks down for the Lash Rock and the DK. Maybe they make the choice to play safe, but considering that they're letting their top lane push in right now, I feel like it's just the do or die play, and they go for throne here. Uh, it's still a, quite a while till Roche is up, and without an extra life, uh, I don't feel like this DK and Lash Rock can really hold up. Uh, to come with me and uh, mind control unless there's some missteps like there were bot lane. I mean, DK doesn't really have that much damage. He yeah. was off to a pretty good start, but, you know, Salt Karras, a very good item to have on DK, but that's not exactly going to help you kill things. You need a Daedalus on top of that or like a Mjolnir or something, anything mm -hmm. really for DK if you're actually going to be a significant threat. It's really just Quista, as you said. If they kill off the Lashrak, I think BU just win the game. Unless it costs yep. them literally their entire team to do it. Actually, like, seven heroes worth since they have double buybacks, or they have mm -hmm. several buybacks. So, uh, is really the only damage source. The Illuminates, maybe the Wall of... No, there's no Wall of Africa, so never mind about that. The Illuminates, just to keep the Lashak alive, it's time to funnel in all the power into Quista. Give Quista your power. Yep. They're going to need a Spirit Bomb of sorts for sure for SFZ's side, especially with no Dragon form up for this impending push. So it would be interesting to see what BU do here. They may not even buy back the uh, the anti-mage. There's an Echo Slam for them in 16 seconds. So by the time SFC get up to high ground, they clump up around the Ancient. They hit a, you know, three, even a three hero Echo Slam. As long as you get the supports in who are, are tasked with keeping up Lashrak, uh, they probably win this fight and the game. So SFC need to be careful to position themselves well here. Definitely not a good time to have internet issues. <laughs> it's not a rise this time, guys. He's not here anymore. It's come with me, who's been the uh, the mainstay in Burn United. So good on him to stick with the name and the team and whatnot. But yeah, it's uh, not exactly going to help if you can't play the game. And Anti Mage yeah. is, I guess, not the most difficult hero to micro, but mm -hmm. he's not a puck. But man, you kind of need someone to actually be on the mouse and keyboard for that. It'd be nice. It'd definitely be nice uh, for BU. I mean, Zai can always play it, right? He's down for 29 seconds, so... Right, no buyback. Might as well. It's, okay, Zai, it's gonna you're, be a you're tough promoted push. into anti-mage. <laughs> you want to burn yeah. some mana. That's how you burn it, mana. Yeah, he has had the greatest of games. He's able to get up this burrow, which is interesting to see, but hasn't really done anything thus far. He jumped up to the high ground, tried to burrow under tower vision. And uh, pretty much got owned for his troubles. Well, yeah. Burrow, really good for defending high ground, actually. Like, yeah. It's kind of deceptive how powerful this skill is. Because mm -hmm. you, like, you look at it and you're like, well, that's a block of text. I'm not going to read that. But just like everything that it does is pretty insane. I'm just going to like put it up for you guys so you can actually read it. Because that is like, yeah. That's quite a lot of The text. Spike Carapace is pretty damn cool. <laughs> you gotta lurker them, man. Nyx Assassin taking a 
page out of Starcraft's book. Brood Boy, I guess. <laughs> maybe maybe uh Legacy of the Void, does that have lurkers? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that one. Hopefully we get these uh these connection issues rectified because this is probably the last two minutes of the game uh, we're encroaching upon here and SFZ once again no dragon form gonna try and mount this push onto the high ground five second BKBs all around come with me with buyback available may not even need to expend it here SF has buyback so mm -hmm. I mean they can throw mind control at them with kind of the echo slam requiem combo yeah. there is there a curse available? I guess not. Oh, not no. for 40 seconds. So that's yeah. actually a big deal for BU not to have. <laughs> At the same time, like, scary phases don't have any tools to actually kill off the Shadow Fiend. Like, once he has BKB up, obviously nothing yeah. is really going to touch him. But yeah. then, like, you need... You would like to have a ranged Dragon Tail. That's something that is super mm -hmm. valuable against Shadow Fiend. But melee Dragon Tail, that's a little bit more difficult to actually land. So, sure. yeah. I don't know. Again, not a good situation for them to be in. We have a Shiva's Guard coming. From the T-Rex. There's that. What's all the hype around Faceless faceless Rex? I think it's just like a joke that actually became a thing and that's why it's <laughs> hyped. Uh, you laugh because it's silly, but I think that's I laugh because it. it's worth $40. <laughs> that's why really? Laugh. Holy shit. It's like, at, at least, it was, it's like at least there's still 36 at this point, which but is this crazy. you need like you get like yeah. a super rare from compendium yeah. some things. Uh, the yeah, the cash compendium cash. I yeah. think it drops on average. It's like one out of fifty or something. Well, I was gonna say one out of forty chests oh. on average, but uh, yeah, it's not it's not the greatest drop rate. But I definitely wouldn't uh, buy that many chests for this little thing. Dude, I'll who keep, actually owns that courier? I'll keep my husky, my little husky. You like the husky, I have. I unboxed the defense courier from way back when. I'm like, oh, cool, a courier. And I didn't realize that it was actually worth a lot. Yeah. It's probably not worth a lot. Probably should have got $200 I for thought, it. No, uh, more than that, <laughs> a lot more than that. Yeah. Yeah. I was just. I thought everyone got the courier, Ass. so I'm like, okay, well, here's the courier. <laughs> Moving on. And then it turns out everyone was really angry because they didn't get a courier. Good That's times. <sighs> Net worth lead. Doesn't mean shit at this yep. point. It's in excess of 20k though. <laughs> Take a look at these meaningless graphs, guys. <laughs> <laughs> look at these lines. Aren't they something? They're majestic, very majestic drawings. Speaking of majestic, the Drakes and the Radiant Ancients. It's unbelievable <laughs> how shitty these things look. <laughs> like, even for a game in beta, it should not look like this. <laughs> Yeah, the textures are like, I swear it's like a solid color. PS2? Like, ah, just, PS1? Just, just make it black here, see what happens. I don't know, I haven't done any of like the Reborn stuff. I don't know if they look any better. I hope they do, for Valve's sake. In general, everything looks a little bit better. Um, yeah, I don't know that they put much work into those ancient black drakes, <laughs> unfortunately. Everything else, ancient-wise, looks a lot better, like the lizards. I mean, the, the ancients whole, all look kind of look like crap, but not as bad as these things, dude. The whole point of Reborn is just the Pentagon. You just need to see what kind of player you are in your profile. <laughs> that's, that's I don't everything. think it's I played a whole bunch of support heroes like before Reborn was released, but like yeah. before that, I was like always playing more cores, and I don't think that mm -hmm. really took into effect. So I don't, I don't have any uh, faith in the Pentagon <laughs> unless it shows that Pentagon I'm a algorithm. Carry. It's a bunch of crap. I, I'm like zero support. Like a, <laughs> You're a like terrible max, person. Max versatile, like trash tier. Like if you if I'm supposed to support, I'll just jungle. Just terrible. Oh, just, oh uh, we're going to have to load. Loading without uh, with ticketless games is a hassle and a half because it doesn't mm -hmm. save as often as ticketed games. Right, right. I don't know when they actually save, but it's not going to be at 49 minutes, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a little tricky. There's 4k gold on this coddle. I wonder what... I mean, his buyback's not going to do anything. I feel like he should like buy something. Maybe even like an or ultimate like, orb. No matter what you buy, is there anything that will like help him with 4,000 gold? Okay, yeah, not... maybe just like a soul booster. Try and keep you up or something. 
Do they have a solar crest? You can buy another solar crest. I'm yeah. not checking the that would properly. That would be decent. Yeah, that would be decent. I think they have one, I believe. They stack. Uh, or, I mean, it's... Oh, they don't. No. Yeah, they don't even have one. Dude, straight buy a solar Just crest. Not. You don't need a freaking magic stick. It's 15 minutes in the game. <laughs> well, that's Sentry Ward, though. <laughs> Hey, well, the enemies have glimmers. <laughs> the magic stick will just actually do nothing. <laughs> what else can you buy? Yeah, Rod I think Solar Crest is the. I think Solar Crest is the is the play. Um, Rod of Atos, straight Orchid. Yeah, Orchid. Lotus. No, Lotus Orchid is pretty be, bad. Orchid could be good. Um, they don't have a curse right now, um, but Orchid could be good against the Wyvern if they're able to uh, get that off. Why the hell do you have 4,000 gold? Buy something, damn it. You can do halberd. I think you just stack mangoes and win the game. <laughs> Give me mana. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, stack no, mangoes. No. Uh, the health looks like Shadow three. Demon spent his gold on what? I don't know. Uh, All right. He's just so, more poor. Like, he yeah. has 14 CS. <laughs> uh, that, that item regression. Hey, it's the support it's life, man. Yeah, right now. 220. That's what happens. 220 GPM on that Shadow Demon. Let's see, what other, what other interesting yet useless things can we look at? <laughs> like fantasy points? Uh, you know, this has, is a uh, ray of wards around the Roche pit here. Hey, these were to make sure. <laughs> That's like, some serious To make sure Roche. that there's no Glimmer Cape shenanigans to steal the cheese. No way that they'll be able to sneak through this. <laughs> that is a laser wall of wards. Do you know yeah. why the sentry wards have like observer ward effect on them? Yeah, see, like Esli net ticket to load Vosmonio. I think they're saying what you're saying. There's no ticket. I guess it means it only saves every 15 minutes, or well, 45 then, right? Mm -hmm. That's not that bad. Anti-Mage will still be alive, B will still be yeah, two maxes up. Really no big deal. BU. Yeah, <laughs> really good for B. <laughs> <laughs> Necroman well saying it as it is. You don't think it be like it is, but it do. <laughs> uh, the donger wearing his ugly head. I was streaming last night. I actually laughed pretty hard. Someone asked him in chat, and he repeated his... Who do you think will win TI? Probably Alliance, Bible Thumb. <laughs> I was just like, classic dong. Rip in uh, peace. Uh, rip Alliance, rip in pieces. Uh, so how's everyone in the chat doing today? You enjoying watching this, uh, this gray screen? I'm having fun right now. <laughs> we are minutes away from losing or gaining our canos, boys. But <laughs> The suspense is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, what is happening to my Terror Blade Arcana? He's oh, not man. even a good I hero. I don't have any like, Arcanas to bet. I'm not going to. I have uh, the LC Arcana. Is it uh, like, oh, where are we going? Uh, okay, like... well, this should be interesting, guys. I'm going to stop the <laughs>